must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us. And we found out that, truly speaking, Rui Moreno Camp, Fernandez Gomedi, the former judge, the president of the International Criminal Court, laundered the money. Some coming from American banks themselves. This evidence was put in the ICC. In the case of Bashir versus the chief prosecutor, I filed an application which I still have and which I'm going to publicize again so that the people can know that I was right. I've been vindicated because my, the American friends now have found that my credibility is real. That I was right when I stood up to say this court is corrupt. This court launders money, 17 million dollars of United States money loaned through Bahamas through you New York banks back to Ocampo's personal assistant by then called Fernandez Gomedi Silvia who later on rose to the ranks of becoming the president of International Criminal Court it has taken us time energy efforts, resources to investigate the corruption scandal that have rocked the International Criminal Court. Why should African countries continue to be in the ICC, yet even if superpowers like America are getting saying no, we have enough courts to try our own people. Viewers, it has taken Americans over 20 years to listen to our voices. When we told Rainberger in Nairobi that this court is a corrupt court. Today, on the eve of September the 11th, I want to deliver a clear and unambiguous message on behalf of the President of the United States. The United States will use any means necessary to protect our citizens and those of our allies from unjust prosecution by this illegitimate court. We will not cooperate with the ICC. We will provide no assistance to the ICC and we certainly will not join the ICC. We will let the ICC die on its own. After all, for all intents and purposes, the ICC is already dead to us. A case of the Kenyan people. These cases in Kenya, the chief prosecutor called Fatou Besuda put silly statements at the end of the cases, discharge and termination. In legal language, these cases pause a very serious threat in the future. What the people of Kenya can do, and they should do, is today to wrap up the work envelope. Because until this envelope is sealed, thrown in the Indian Ocean, the chief prosecutor in the future will come and look for that envelope, use it to incriminate people again. It brings me back to the situation. America is sealing its journey out of the ICC. Why do you wait? Why don't you take this opportunity to seal your journeys out of the ICC? America is quitting, warning that it cannot no longer be a party to such an obnoxious court, a court that has no powers that talks from this side and vomits from the other side. A court 
that cuts and pastes evidence, a court that buys witnesses, a court that incites in incentives, gives incentives to witnesses of a passport and a relocation, then you tell lies about people. The court that sentences you as per the words there. Why should you leave a, a country that has a jury that checks on what the judges would do, the excesses of judges, and go to a country, a court that has no jury? Time has come for Africa to think. Do we need this court? Does Africa need this court? Good morning, Africa. Good morning, wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much for watching Punchline Africa Television. This is Punchline Africa Television, broadcasting from the Political Command Center of Punchline Africa Television, away from the headquarters of Punchline Africa in Nairobi. Thank you very much, viewers, wherever you are in The Hague, in Amsterdam, in G4 Airport, in Europe, in France, in Gambia, in Czech Republic, Poland, United States of America. Good morning. Whatever you are, good night. Whatever if you are sleeping in China, Russia, thank you very much. In Palestine, Israel, Syria, Turkey, good morning. Above all, good morning, Africa. The continent that never ends, the continent that begins, a divided continent that does not listen to its own voices, a continent that has been bewitched, whoever bewitched Africa is the shape of Africa itself. Africa divided into three. The divide and the rule system, the Arabs in the North Mediterranean Sea, the confusion in the West, in the Atlantic, French taking some portions, English taking some portions, Spaniards taking some portions, Portuguese taking some portion in the west of Atlantic, where Atlantic Ocean is. In the east, Indian Ocean, French, English, divided, Italians take it. The Dutch take the southern part of the tip of Africa. It has remained divided throughout. Never has it worked, and it looks it might not work. We work on the paper. We work when we zoom in with planes, jets. We fly in in the suburb, praise ourselves of Nkrumah's speeches. We listen to Patrice Lumumba crying for Congo. but we don't even name streets in our capitals. We watch Gaddafi crying for help, but we don't help. Is Africa united. We pass the resolutions each and every day in the United Nations, in African Union, but we don't implement them. No sooner had we left at the suburb, done the same torn to pieces. No sooner than we impress the world with very big perfumes, very big planes, very big nice suits in the suburb, than the ink dries in a different direction. Viewers, today's topic, 
I will introduce my panel later when I have gone through it. And I want the panel to bear with me, to take notes. What has brought this topic on top on the International Criminal Court? The selection of the five people, the shortlisting of five candidates, unqualified, unequal, as Kenya has put it. And I believe, Miriam, you have a letter from Kenya, which the production team must put on the screen for people to see. The danger of unequal selected shortlisted candidates is very real. But I want to disclose to the world today that what you see is the tip of the iceberg. It's just a small portion. It's a small portion of what happened before we even reached where we are. First of all, who are the committee? I want to lay a background. The committee members were from Poland, Gambia, Cyprus, Canada, and Argentina. Can you believe that? Argentina, where the former prosecutor came from. Gambia, where the, pre, the current prosecutor comes from. Poland and the Cyprus and the Canada, where one of the candidates came from, shortlisted. I'm going to break this down. Because the Kenya government, I don't work for them. My organization is Pan-African Forum, UK Limited. I will stood, I will stand, I will work for Africa, whatever I will be. I don't work for the government of Republic of Kenya, but I defend Africa where possible. I understand the dynamics of international conspiracy. I understand the international movement of intelligence systems because I've gone to school and read them. If you have a challenge with me, go and ask God who gave me the talent. Don't ask me. I want to tell you frankly that the events that have taken place in the ICC since last year, culminating in the selection of the four names that we have seen are very, very disturbing. On 19th of February, the year of our Lord, 2020, New York time, the committee had a lunch, luncheon with the executive director of George Soros in New York. I will provide the details of the receipts, the amount of money paid, who paid for the lunch, how much was paid, why George Soros directed executive director can sit down to give a committee lunch that is selecting the new prosecutor. 20th of February 2020 in the same New York location we've held for intelligence purposes and the security purposes. CCTV will be obtained. The same director, executive director of George Soros meets the committee, this time accompanied 
by the bank, the chairperson of Open Society Foundation in New York. They had a dinner. That is after the selection. That was the time when the selection process was taking place. If any of the diplomats from Poland, Gambia, Cyprus, Canada, Argentina can swear on oath that they did not have dinner with George Soros' executive director, then we can proceed for damages. I'm ready. I have the evidence. I will pile this evidence before the, the chairman of Assembly of State Parties. And I will file a formal complaint to the International Criminal Court Appeal Chamber to the President of the Court, Judge Osuji, to notify him that the committee proceedings of the committee should be nullified because they have been affect, infected with the corruption coronavirus that is sweeping the world and that destroyed New York. On 21st of February 2020, the last day of publishing and submitting the names to the expert committee. And I want you to, I want you to understand who are the members of the expert committee. It's laughable, very laughable, very, very laughable. And I want to thank Kenya for listening. I want to thank other countries for listening. My country, Uganda, my sister, Okaline, is a qualified person. But she has, put, she has been put in a wrong group where she cannot as, ascend to the prostitutorship. Judge Okolang is qualified. The only person qualified on that panel is the Ugandan lady. But she has been put in unequal circumstances through international law. She can't manage to bypass the monster. The monster on this committee and the monster in the short list is Fago Gaina. Fago Gaina, an Irish by background, married to a Kenyan woman, actually from Kisumu, has a concubine also in London has committed serious crimes. And I want to be on record that I filed an application in the same appeal chamber number five on President Uru Kenyatta case, citing irregularities of the lawyer of witness of victims lawyer, Fago Gaina who bought a house on Gongo Road, whose details I still have, which I can now proudly tell Kenyans that the details are here. Well, well kept with the payments. You can see all these. These are details and the payments. How he bought the house, who paid for the house, who bribed him 
to go ahead with the Uru Kenyatta case. On 21st of February, they concluded their names and they handed all this. And there's one thing that you must mark the panel as you listen. And you was outside there. One thing that is very clear is the chief, the former chief prostitute, Louis Moreno Camp, through the Argentina, Argentine man who was on the panel, favored Mr. Fago Gaina. The current prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, Fatou Besuda, through the Gambian, the Gambian minister who was on the panel, favored Mr. Gaina. That's why Kenya calls it an equal, <laughs> an equalist. I have correspondences, text messages, telephone intercepted between Fatou Besuda, Moreno Ocampo, the committee, I will parade that before the court. Viewers, own unspecified days, the committee made the recommendations to experts. And I want you to take this very serious. The experts are France. Look, take the names of experts. Chile. France. Sierra Leone. And the Czech Republic. These experts all were coerced by a country that pays 75% of the salaries of the ICC. And I guess what country it is. France. The French knew very well they will not give the Uganda. They will not give the Canadian because he speaks both French from Quebec and English from Ontario. They knew very well. The man Anya, Anza Anya, is a black man holding an American passport. Works in Chicago. And being an American, an American using ICC, technically this man does not qualify. The Uganda, being the only qualified lady on the panel, having risen from the judge to the highest level, she was put under the unequal circumstances. She's an African. Fatou Besuda leaving the seat to another African is a longer journey more than having water springing from Sahara Desert and a river occupying the entire Sahara Desert. Fellow Africans, viewers, participants on the panel. Let's look at what the experts came out with. The experts came out and said via link, via link, Mark you, this exercise contravenes the act, the statute, 
the Roman statute is contravened, they would have asked that suspended the exercise until we sit down and meet, not via any link. The Roman statute is very clear under the statute which is stipulated the meet the experts must meet look through together and I repeat look through together either they are in the same room or the same building but they must be together there was a violation of the Roma statute they came out, they selected the four. South America has had its chance. North America, US does not like to see ISIS. Africa has had its chance. Mr. Fargo Gaina, the Kenyan in law, in quotes, owning a house on Gongo Road, plot number in quotes. I don't know where the wife is aware, but I'm going in deep. When I come, I come with earthquake. Was put in. Technically, Mr. Anza Anya is an American. I don't know whether my panel understands the game played here. <laughs> Finally, it is the chance for Europe to eat. And uh, Europe will eat. But what spells for Africa when Mr. Anya, 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 or oh, when Mr. Gain, Fago Gainer comes in as the chief prosecutor. What did he do last? You remember when this gentleman came here? He paid Safaricom to pay witnesses, to manufacture witnesses. These are facts that I've laid before court. I have a personal beef to solve and a national and continental beef to sort. Those two words are not the same. All of you who are English operators, I have something to sort and I have something to solve. I must solve the problem of not having a chief prostitute who comes in the name of Fago Guy. But I must sort the mess that he created together with Makao Mutua, Harun Dubi, Maina Kiai, Radiel Otiano, Jojo Mue. The late Wafula Ken, I have never forgiven you because you have never apologized to me for the trauma, the stress, the mismatch, the prostitution. I repeat, the prostitution of my name. You prostituted my name. You maligned my name took me from corner to corner of John Pork to meet the boy, John, calling me a liar. We haven't sorted that out. Some of you who enjoy this, enjoy the places in the high places of president of the current government, we have not sorted out this mess. It keeps on coming. 
Finally, why are we here? Why are we here? Because Africa never unites. We passed a resolution from the United Nations, from African Union, that we walk out of the African, the International Criminal Court, Hamas, only one country did it. And I want to tell the people the truth, that there are some people who give government wrong advice. Some of them are in Kenya also. They say, don't get out of the ICC. But it will catch you. It is going to catch you. It will return if you are still there. Even if the cases are there, but if you are out, it will never come until it seeks the United Nations Security Council permission to come back to investigate anything in Kenya. If you live as Uganda, you will be safer under the mandate of the United Nations Security Council than you are under one woman with a skirt who wears her skirt and comes to you any morning, knocks on your door, collects you, and takes you to the head. Africa would be better if they consolidated their efforts on building the African Court of Justice and the Human Rights. President Uru Kenyatta paid $1 million to the African Union. Kenya paid $1 million to the African Union. If you ask for that money today, it has been embezzled. We have not able to create a court. We are not united. Why is African Union not united? Why are we fielding several candidates? Why are we looking at the story which is in the nation? We have fielded three candidates. Amina Mohammed, Ngonzi Okojo, and Abdelhel Hamid Madaw of Egypt, plus Amina Mohammed of Kenya. Three candidates. Why is Africa disunited? Lady and the gentlemen on the panel. This unity can be seen here. Look at the disunity we have. If Gabriel Nasser woke up from Egypt, Kwame Nkrumah woke up from Ghana, Jomo Kenyatta woke up from Kenya, and Mandela woke up from South Africa, what is their first thing they will ask you in the studio on the panel? Another point I want to leave the panel with is Article 127 of the United Nations, of Article 127 of International Criminal Court. And I want this to be recorded, Stephen. Cut in two parts so that the people can listen what I have said. If there is any lawyer who is better than me on this, come and let's do it. Forget about the Karim Khan, it's a theatrics. But he hasn't studied the subject deeper. Look at me. Article 127 of the Roman Statute is very clear. 
that once the marriage becomes unmarriageable and unmanageable, once the marriage between the ICC and the state party becomes unmanageable, and there are terms that you cannot agree on, those who have taken divorce, Anybody who has taken divorce on the panel will tell me. Irreconcilable differences. Once you have irreconcilable differences, as a state with the body of Fatou Besuda and the entire ICC, you notify the United Nations Secretary General two years in advance. And I tell the Secretary General that under Article 127, I have been wronged. I have been beaten. My husband beats me day morning, locks me outside my bedroom, does not come home for a week, yet he's in the town. He says he's in Mombasa, yet he's in Nakuru. The marriage is irreconcilable. Therefore, I have gone. The country Kenya, the country Uganda, the country Tanzania, the country Egypt, the country whoever is a member, signed member in the Rome Statute, ratified the 1998 July. statute of the Rome statute in Rome where I was present where I was present and I want to thank the former PS of foreign affairs he was working as a first secretary in the Kenyan embassy in New York or at the UN I met him in Italy he would tell you this is how far I've come the only thing I've increased is weight, which is the final journey for every human being. But in 1998, I was active in the hall in Rome, in Italy, with Twitterman. I met him there. We were waiting for the, the initiation of this obnoxious organization. Little known to me was this organization would turn up to destroy the entire Africa. Viewers, it is therefore very important that those benchmarks plus the ICC selected selection committee. Why is Africa ever divided? Thank you very much. Africa has been divided. What can we do as Africans on this panel? My panel this afternoon or this morning, yes, this afternoon, sorry, my panel this afternoon is in the studio down in Nairobi, miles away from me, is Miriam Ogutu. Good afternoon, Miriam. Good afternoon, Doctor, and thank you so much for that introduction. Thank you very much. Professor Onyari is a man who has been with me all along on this journey. <laughs> Even when I address over 5,000 students in Jomo Kenyatta University in Onufika Road, we were together with Onyali, and I floored Professor King Sangani. <laughs> That's true. Yes, you were there. Another international, uh, a man who has no, a windfall, who, who, who goes where money is. I don't go where money is. Is now working for Ruto. 
Even if Ruto gives me one million dollars, I will not work. No. But if ICC touches him, I will stand for him. For free. I want to warn the people to know it. Before I, so that Miriam does not shoot those questions later. I want the people to know I am the one who stopped BCJ from collecting signatures of taking Museven to the ICC. Because when I start talking about the Uganda politics, BCJ keeps quiet. He has to. Because I'm an editor first on the scene. Two, I'm the only one who has never worked with the regime. And I don't intend to. But I can't help them. So if you want to take President Museven to the head, I will defend him. Because I hate ICC. Any African, as long as I'm alive, I will defend him or her against a court that carries Africans. We used to be carried on boats. Now we are being carried through paperwork. We were being carried, chained here to be put on boats across Atlantic and across the Arabian Sea. But now we are being called on paperwork, arrive here, come to Europe. Oh my, oh my God. Kibira Magistrates Court is better than ICC. Magistrate Ogoda, is it Ogoda? Magistrate Madame Juma, who sentenced Waruke, is 100% better land than Fatou Besuda because she knows the law. So thank you very much, Professor, for joining us. Next, Professor, you can test the microphone. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Masanga, for that uh, elaborative uh, introduction. We are ready for the show. Thank you very much. Next is Thompson Alomba. Onyango from Kisumu. Thank you, uh, Dr. David Masanga, for that uh, wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, and of course, for your uh, inspired leadership. I am, uh, I am really elated, only uh, having uh, heard from you. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you very much. Next I now hand over them, the leadership to Miriam, to quiz me down, to quiz us down, to direct us where to go, whether Damascus or Jerusalem. <laughs> I rest my case. All right, thank you, Doc. Thank you so much there, uh, Dr. Matsanga. So as we speak right now, Kenya has rejected four candidates shortlisted for the position of the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, ICC, on grounds that the process is skewed at favor one applicant. Kenya also argued that the list was tailored to favor candidates from outside Africa. Now, in a letter to the ICC dated July 13th, 2020, Kenya's ambassador to the, to the Netherlands, Lawrence Lenayapa, says the shortlist denies member states the opportunity to identify through open and transparent consultations a consensus a candidate professor nyari why is consultation important especially in such an institution that uh, kenya is saying icc through uh, the selection of these uh, people did not really consider thank you so much thank you so much for that question miriam and uh, this is a very good topic we are discussing for for the good of Africa. Kenya has done the good thing and made a very good decision. You cannot be part, you, you cannot be part of a discussion where you are not involved. Issues 
which comes to affect you directly. For heaven's sake, rules of natural justice say that you must have an input. Remember the kind of uh, the kind of candidates Dr. Masanga uh, has taken us through. I think other nations of the world should rise up and say no. The process is not transparent. And remember, you are talking about this, uh, this, 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 this international, international criminal court. We have had a very bad relations with them. When the 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 the, the Ocampo six were prosecuted there, and remember, this court is targeting Af is targeting African. So as much as we want to support what it stands for. Let them let people be involved. And when we talk about involvement, and remember our constitution requires us that we participate. So things where Kenyans we have not been involved because it is very key in our constitution that public participation is very important. Because you inform people, you consult people, you allow people to do to do all other things. So Kenya has taken a very good step. We have not been consulted. We don't know how they arrived it, and we will never be part of that because the system itself is not transparent. They have not followed the rules of the court. All right, thank you so much, Professor. Uh, now, the International Criminal Court, of course, came about after an overwhelmingly majority of states attending uh, the Rome Conference voted in favor of its adoption about 20 years ago. The aim was to combat the grave crimes of genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity that threaten peace and security in the world. Now, the court seeks to put an end to impunity by ensuring that these serious crimes don't go unpunished and ensure their effective prosecution uh, through international cooperation. Now, sometimes back, in uh, February 2017, I think during uh, the ordinary meeting at the African Union there in Addis Ababa, the AU called for the mass withdrawal of member states from the International uh, Criminal Court. And we'll get to the reasons as to uh, some of that had been put forth as to why AU was encouraging its member states to move from the ICC. And seeing that uh, Africans are the ones who had really uh, approved of this case from the initial states, African countries overwhelmingly, a lot of us, supported uh, the ICC. And now, a couple of years later, they're saying, perhaps not, uh, we need to get out of this accord. What do you think went wrong? Samson. Uh, Mary, uh, allow, now that we are, reading, uh, we, are, we are having this particular discussion, allow me to also cite some examples that were uh, uh, that are instructive to my point that I'm just uh, about to put across. Uh, allow me to say that ICC has, uh, lo has long lost its mandate uh, of bringing the, the whole world to order. Uh, let us look at uh, the first instance in 20, this was in 2011, when uh, the ICC uh, issued arrest warrant against uh, one Omar El Bashir. So there was a time Omar came to Kenya and uh, Kenya was put to task to uh, issue, uh, like to arrest him, to execute an arrest. You remember that almost uh, caused a, a serious diplomatic row between a Kenya, the, between uh, the Kenyan government and the uh, Sudanese government. Another scenario was in 20, uh, 2012, uh, when an AU summit meeting had to be moved from Lilongwe to, from Lilongwe to Ethiopia because Lilongwe was ready to execute the arrest. Another scenario in 2013, uh, Omar, uh, Omar Bashir had to flee Nigeria when uh, threat activists were ready to, uh, were pressurizing the courts to, to issue a warrant of arrest against of, uh, El Bashir. So generally looking at the three scenarios, uh, ICC to such has led to the uh, disunity among African countries. There is a serious difference everywhere. So uh, according to me, I, I ask uh, fellow Africans, who, whoever cares to listen, uh, that Africa must regenerate, Africa must re uh, redefine itself, Africa must uh, chart a new trajectory, 
towards uh, enhancing uh, African Union in a bid to uh, walk it, uh, with its shoulders high in the com uh, committee of uh, continents. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. So, uh, Doctor, some issues uh, that were brought up by some African countries as to why they wanted to leave the uh, to get out of the ICC is because they were accusing the ICC of undermining the sovereignty and unfairly targeting Africans. Also, uh, the ICC came out and denied these allegations, insisting it is pursuing justice for victims of war crimes in Africa. And when you look at the situation in Africa, and then you look at uh, uh, places like the Middle East right now and, and, and the things that are happening, right there i don't know where right now that we have we have even more numbers in terms of war crimes and we don't see those cases being pursued uh, with uh, you know uh, the money in which they're being pursued here in the continent doctor so is, is it a double standard when it comes to looking at african and how they treat africans and the cases here in the continent compared to elsewhere in the world doctor I'm muted, sir. Mm -hmm. go ahead I I don't know if doctor is, is available, but go ahead, professor. He's muted. Okay, go ahead. Professor, you can Let him unmute himself. Yes. Let him Thank you very much. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Because I, I had talked so much and I, I thought I was leaving you to make some points. I was listening <laughs> to the points of Onyango. Yes. Onyango brought a very serious issue of Bashir. The question of Bashir before I come to answer Miriam's situation, mm -hmm. quick one. Bashiru's case is fake. Not that the people did not die. People died. But the case was not well investigated. If that case was put on test freely without America pressurizing the arrest of Bashir to be delivered in The Hague, now the same America that pressurized Bashir to be put on trial. It's the same America telling us not ever, ever, ever to touch an American. So if you if if you brought the case of Bashir today, Bashir will walk out of that place like a babugu. Bashir will walk out of that place like a bema. Because the commanders of Janjaweed and the commanders of Jema, where are they? Show me the Jema commanders of Dafu who have been charged alongside Bashir. What be? Where are they? The commanders of Uganda People's Defense Forces. Where are they? You charged error, but you left UPDF. Is that justice? You charged Gemma, and you left, you judged Janjaweed, which was Bashir, and you left Gemma. You charged Bemba, and uh, you left Bozizi, the president who invited Bemba to. Bemba is not from Central African Republic. Bemba is a Congolese. Mm. He doesn't have two legs. He doesn't have two, two mothers. He has only one mother, a Congolese. Why did you judge him and you refused to judge Bozize, who invited the member to bring him troops? You judge Thomas Irubanga, and you failed to judge Kabira. You judge Ntagana, and you failed to judge Kabira. Where Congolese troops using water where Congolese troops using water, was the boss Contagana using water? Was Thomas Irubanga using water? You judge, let, let's go, all African cases. You judge 
babu go and uh, you live warasana kwatara that man from bukit first who has taken over a country which is not his me i hate students may god help me how do you judge babugo and they leave mr kwatara whose troops went to cote d'ivoire and killed the people was kwatara using water the bullets that came out of the guns of kwatara's troops they had water so there was no harm you go to libya you judge Ga said gaddafi and uh, you leave the terrorists who started the war of killing libyans and uh, later on i catch you on said gaddafi that you picked money from an ngo to judge sunun and others have you seen have you seen what this man is standing against you come to kenya and you select the tall ones and the short one the short one in kenya you saw him the tall ones you saw them three here three there have you ever seen the justice of that nation who are free the highest responsible person for any crime internationally is the mafia boss who sits in sicily and orders the assassination and says champlain gerard is seated near an american flag British flag and a Kenyan flag. What do you do? Let the bullet not touch the Kenyan flag. Let the bullet touch the left eye only. That's how mafia. That's the man they are looking for. The Godfather. I want to put one question to you as a part. Who was the God? Who were the Godfathers in the Kenyan situation? who let's not even mention them let's leave it for the sake of unity who was supposed to be charged is not uru is not ruto is not to campo six i proudly want to say so because none of them qualified to be the godfathers in sudan that's what happened if you have judged bashir the head of the army you must judge the owner of janjaweed militia that keep up the no of jema that killed thousands of their own black people the black the black arabs of south sudan with dark face like me because they are also arab arabs with sense and this side is black black it's like the indian and and bangladesh and then sri lanka in sri lanka you have black africans so the choice is upon you africans there was nothing wrong nothing nobody will say there were no crimes there were crimes my disagreement miriam and the panel professor all along you have heard me say this the investigations were short you want to charge matsanga but you failed to charge makao mutua professor makao mutua when applying for the job of chief justice i want you kenyans who are listening to him 
What did he tell you? He said he trained investigators who came to arrest Uru Kenyatta and Ruto on TV. So was this Ugandan man? Was I mad in 2010 to say people procured witnesses? I was nicknamed Mr. Procured. Thank you. The name grew up. People are procuring witnesses now. I like that English has grown up in Kenya. So, Miriam, in essence, we can't unite. In essence, even in this debate here, you see the man we are condemning now is going to go through because Africa will reach there. Ireland starts flying their jet with some euros. <laughs> Euro and they give delegates to vote. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I was very embarrassed when I saw African ministers of foreign affairs pocketing fifty thousand dollars each. In the Sheraton Hotel, I swear in the name of God, my hand is up. During Amina, Amina's election, I saw, apart from Museven, Uhuru Kenyatta, Kagame, and Mugabe, the rest of the presidents ate the money. Their tickets, their airway bills, their landing charges, hotel bills were cleared by Total Oil. I took, I have the photographs. Trust in me. Here I am, trust him. I have the photographs of the lady who was distributing the money. I still have them. Anybody who's saying now, I pray them now. Now, I have them behind somewhere in London, my home. Right now, I will go in one of the rooms and pray. Miriam, imagine the whole Minister of Foreign Affairs of an African country representing Zimbabwe pocketed the money in my presence. New notes. Another one. Then I said, oh, oh, what? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. And I wrote a note to let him give it, gave it to someone who usually smuggles our notes in because the director of intelligence by that time is, was called Bonyongwe. He was also around when this money was being paid. So they will frustrate. But I had Mugabe created another wall, another man who could go in and deliver everything I do. And every time they tried to talk about me, he laughed at them. He said, <laughs> What you are now telling me, my friend has told me already. That's the late man we missed. May Africa missed a stronger guy of that day. So in a nutshell, medium, we have a problem, a very big problem. This man, Fargo, is going to pass. If we don't, if people like us, don't go in. Kenya has just written a statement. They will keep quiet. When it is too late, you will hear the man has gone through. And as soon as he goes through, you know what he's going to do. You know Fatou Besuda will give a final direction on how they want the court to be left. I've given you the type of corruption 
of the background. And I've challenged the committee if they did not take the dinner and the lunch, plus the envelopes they carried. Mm. Let them fall in, in, the, in the Adriatic Ocean, Indian Ocean, or Atlantic. Because they are not worth it. So coming back to your question, mm. which I might have missed a bit, if you can. The question was, I don't know, how did you, <laughs> you framed it, I missed, mixed the two because I picked what uh, he had said. Yes, what he had said. I, th I think you've answered uh, the question in essence. Oh, okay. yes, Thank please. you very much. You have. Thank you. I leave you now. All right. Jo on, on that one, I'm here. Okay. I'm back here. All right. Thank Fully. you. All right. So, Miriam, uh, Miriam, 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 mm -hmm. a minute, Miriam, mm -hmm. a, a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, just, just to uh, to build on what Dr. has just said uh, to our viewers uh, who care to listen. Uh, statistics have it that uh, last year alone, uh, the ICC used 160 million US dollars. So a greater chunk of these are the remittances from the African countries. This 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 tells you that we as Africans are real stakeholders uh, at the ICC, and as such, we are entitled to fair uh, fair treatment. Uh, otherwise, we we, we should uh, we should uh, chart a new trajectory out of uh, ICC. Otherwise, a new uh, Arab Spring will uh, will play off in our own uh, as we see. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. So, uh, Professor Critics of the ICC point out that uh, now that we brought up the cases of Sudan uh, and Professor there has explained, I, I mean, Doctor has explained, uh, you know, the case that uh, still Obar al-Bashir has a warrant of arrest from the ICC. And now critics of the ICC point out that both uh, Sudan and Libya were referred to the court by the United Nations Security Council, where three of five veto-wielding uh, countries, that is China, Russia, and the United States, are not even members of the court. And while the Security Council was quick to have leaders of, of the two countries indicted, uh, critics have also observed that efforts to refer countries like Syria have so far been thwarted by some of these countries, of course, in the, of the permanent members who hold the veto powers. Uh, it's very interesting there. Can we talk about the double standards uh, at the ICC, uh, Professor? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Miriam, for that good question. And uh, the way Dr. Masang has built up the, the case. Mm -hmm. You know, one of, one of the the issues we have not agreed with the with ICC is on the, on the immunity and the procedural matters. That is what this uh, we have had countries like United States of America, mm -hmm. Britain. They write the word that they were weapons of mass destruction, biological weapons in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any up today? They apologize. Did you see the AFOC? Do you see the AFOC? It costs, it cost, it cost in that country. Absolutely. Libya was a stable country. What is of Libya today? So honestly, how do you push someone to something which you don't believe in? That's why we are on the forefront that we must have the African Court of Justice, we should be able to enhance. No Africans should be shivered outside this continent. It has happened before, and we have had a, a very bad history. So this kind of things uh, uh, we are saying, can Africa unite to do this? And we seem not to understand. Sometimes I am I am grateful for for Britain. Yes, they colonized us, but they left us with, they left us with our thinking. What happened to Frankfurt countries? Their thinking is in Paris up to now. Decisions have to come from Paris up to now. That's why Africa will never be united. So America and uh, Russia and uh, China, those countries, which are not an ISIS, moral duty and obligation tells us you don't push someone else. So on matters of, of immunity and the procedural matters, that's why we have not agreed. How do you take an African president in the case of Masir? He's in power. Why don't you get, wait? He gets out of power, then he handles him there. We have never agreed on that. So on this, mm -hmm. look what is happening in the Middle East. 
the Israel, the Israelis will kill the Palestinians. And they will say they were having self protection. Mm -hmm. Protecting the sovereignty. They do that every day. Yes. Mm. There, them is self defense. But when the Palestinians do that one, they can be dragged there. So something which they do not believe in. Okay. Let Africa come out of their, their slumber. Eh? And we say never again. Let us build institutions for Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, Samson has said, see the kind of contribution. Out of 124 countries, 34 African countries are there. So we have got a share, but we don't have a voice. So where you don't have a voice, for everything's sake, implement the resolutions of the African Union of getting out of that place. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, uh, and uh, to add on that, Miriam. Go ahead. This is my, I had forgotten this. Yes. Let me shock you. Mr. Gaynor hmm. placed an amicus curé. Friend of the court. <laughs> the friend of the court. In an intervention situation, in the question of Palestine, you know Kenya should have asked me more. But since I don't work for them, I don't need to. Now I'm telling them. Another thing that could have fixed, which will fix Mr. Gaynor, which should the committee, if it was not George Soros, who paid them to select him, is he applied an amicus curiae in the case of the Palestinian. He should have declared to the committee mm. that he had been an amicus curiae in the Palestinian case. Yes. Two, the African Union during the Uhuru Kenyatta and the, and the cases, Mr. Gaynor insulted the African Union, telling the African Union that we are zombies. Mm. Is this the chief prosecutor mm -hmm. that the African Union can endorse? When he has called us zombies, mm. he called us zombies, he called us net, he called us several things. I cannot even mention him on TV. Is this an independent prosecutor you want to put in charge mm -hmm. to pursue matters of international nature? when he has already been a party. I won't. Why already? I won't. So given all this, mm -hmm. Kenya should not only stop here now. Because I know my Kenyan people always sleep until the last minute. This thing has been taking place since February. And I've been notifying them that something is coming. Something is coming. Now I want to tell them here publicly that let's move now. These guys want to do something under COVID-19 cover. By the time we go in November in New York, while I December, we shall find Ghana our slaughterhouse. Mm -hmm. So let's not sleep. Let the diplomats of Kenya anywhere not sleep. Let's not sleep, especially the diplomat in The Hague. Let him work with us, activists, serious men, who when they, when ICC sees us, it shakes. 
this expose his confusion. Mm -hmm. And if we sleep, we might wake up. We have our people again. It's another point, media, which I want to drag you in. And this is very interesting for you, Kenyans. The work envelope. Now, and I've chosen to speak now. I will never speak on it again. Because I've done my best. In 2015, Professor Onyadi knows, I moved to the High Court of the Republic of Kenya. I and my friend, another petitioner, together we moved to the High Court of Republic of Kenya. The purpose of going to that court was to remove a fake investigation called Waki Commission of Inquiry. The Waki Commission of Inquiry was fake, was obnoxious, was silly, was very stupid. Mm. Use all the words you want to use was corrupt. People bought witnesses to come and give evidence against certain people. Moses Kuria gave both witnesses. He went to national television and they told you he was buying witnesses for 2,000. Now, evidence of that nature, Miriam. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell whoever is watching me, and whoever is the handler for the government, watch my lips, how they move up and down. If you don't expunge the English word I'm using is expunge. That's the right one. Because I read Shakespeare in English. I am partly from the lake. Medium has just refused to take me there. <laughs> the flights, the flights are back on. That's how we travel to the lake, but go ahead. <laughs> I need a company. So <laughs> look at this. <laughs> Look at this. If we don't, if Kenya government does not expand the work envelope, the work report, remove it from its book of statute. Statute. Is that also another good English word? If the Kenya government does not remove this from their books of statute, from their parliament, from hazard. Is it hazard, sorry? Hazard. Hazard. Mm -hmm. hazard. Whatever you call it, we Ugandans have a problem there. If they don't remove it, the mirage of presidents and the mirage of retirement could be huge. Because as long as that report is within you, it means a new chief prosecutor who has this envelope of 20 names can reopen any time using different names, can come for other people. Isn't it? True. Depending on the same evidence of work. I am telling my Kenyan friends to listen to me. I don't want your money. I don't want anything. Please do a favor. In these two years, we get rid of the work envelope. 
We get rid of the work report. Exercise it. Exercise. I think, is that also good English? Mm -hmm. Carry it and throw it in Indian Ocean. We slaughter some sheep and the cows and the, say, Alleluia, Sadak. We forget, we move forward and the BBI. The moment you leave that report hanging around Kenya, 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 when you read ICC, you hear work ever, work report. Some person from Europe without shoes, with slippers and sandals, will walk down here in Nairobi. Or will wait for you to travel to Italy, Rome, Spain. Usually it is Spain, where Spaniards are ready with their, their, <laughs> their warrants. And they say you are in a hotel enjoying. And I'm giving advice to those Please. in the government to listen to me. When you give these people, they go and earn credit. They don't come back to say, thank you, Matanga. But because I love my president, my friend, my African, my Pan-African man, I love him so much. I will do everything on the planet Earth to make sure that I safeguard him and I safeguard anybody. I safeguard those younger men. They were going to be killed. They were going to be fungered. Aisha, I stood up and I finished it. Work envelope, medium. Kata. Kata na makans. Let one member of parliament move a motion. And I'm now telling you what to do. If the courts are having hiccups, parliament can remove you. Move a motion in the parliament, aware that this is what happened. The, the, the envelope was not handed to Kibaki. Mr. Kibaki is still alive. Can we go and ask him where the envelope was handed to him? Who gave him the copy of the envelope? Do you know the names? We only know six. What about 14? What about a new chief prostitute, a Muzungu? The, the one they are bringing now comes and says that was Fatou Besuda, me in Kenya, nobody got justice, I'm going again. You will not stop him because the report is still available. Mm -hmm. But once you have expanded this report, Miriam, from the books of the Republic of Kenya, and a motion, a bill, is enacted to that effect, that we have now healed the Rift Valley and other parts of Kenya are now peaceful. We don't want to listen to that report. Let it not be a part of reference of our lives. I went to court. I lost 7 million Kenya shillings. On lawyers, I paid the lawyers. Up to today, I'm still paying another lawyer. If you see my luggage or goods taken, yeah, my lawyer is there. He will tell you I have not finished paying his money. I pay him. I've agreed. Nobody. People refused. People refused to listen to me. Now you can see with this new letter that has come out. Why is the ambassador, if you think this ISIS is not great, why has the ambassador reacted? <laughs> uh -huh. 
Don't you see the danger ahead? We, my people, ye, medium, ye. Don't you see the danger, ye? Why did Jesus look for a dog? It's this type of thing. He saw it ahead that perhaps if he walked to Jerusalem on foot, they would have killed him before. <laughs> before he, he, he drives out the thieves who are stealing our money in corruption. So let President Uru Kenyatta take the first step. We have 739 days. I always count them. <laughs> Clean this mess, Miriam, to your disappointment. Justice Odunga turned me down, checked me out, tried to check me out of the report, but little known that Justice Odunga did not know I was with a Kenyan petition. Therefore, I want to tell the Kenyans that little known to the Waki, I made an appeal. We made an appeal. So my appeal now, starting from next month, next week, I'm activating it. Since Maraga is leaving, by the time January there, there will be favorable people who will look at my appeal. Because Maraga under me is like a court under the body. We don't meet. Have you seen the court meeting in the body? Where? <laughs> From the shoulders, it goes down. <laughs> so, Miriam, <laughs> that's why I am not wearing it today, and I believe that's why my friends are not wearing it. It's only women's uh, blouses that, and the courts that meet in the body. <laughs> but men's courts never meet in the body. They part. The court and the body, they always part. They walk in the opposite direction. <laughs> so, let the Kenya government clean the mess, remove Wakembaro. I was surprised that the Attorney General opposed me. That's the news I wanted to break to you. Mm -hmm. I was opposed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, Miriam, mm -hmm. don't ask. And they are my friends. Don't ask too many why they oppose me. I don't know. Now, the Kenyans know I tried. Now, the, the president know I tried. And I was opposed by the attorney general and the solicitor general. They opposed me in the court. And I was shocked that I was opposed by Oraro, one of the bright minds of law in Kenya, who was with me on the ICC cases. So maybe because I'm a foreigner, I kept quiet. But I pushed to an appeal stage. I'm there. The English, the settings, the evidence, is Matangas. I want Kenyans to know to expand the work report to, to throw away, kill the entire report as null and void. So even if you come with these names in the future, 2022, 2025, 2026, 2030, maybe some of us would have gone to sleep somewhere God, God has taken us. Nobody comes back to haunt Kenya again. Thank you. Right, thank you so much. Uh, so, um, of course, Africa states uh, joined the ICC in large numbers. 
As we speak, 33 members are from Africa. 13 additional African countries have signed the Rome st uh, Treaty, although they are yet to take the final step. And uh, Africa is followed by 25 states from the Western Europe, uh, 28 from the Latin America and the Caribbean have uh, 18. I know 18 from the East, uh, Eastern Europe and only 20 from Asia. Uh, this proves the initial strong African interest in the ICC. Uh, but from the, what we've been seeing and uh, what looks like a very a selective justice there that is being meted coming from ICC, uh, 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 our, our, our correspondent uh, from Kisumu, uh, Africa is the only ones committing uh, crimes proscribed by the Rome Statutes compared to uh, every other country in the world. Uh, me, Miriam uh, and uh, fellow uh, uh, if you, I, I, I just believe that you guys have uh, dug into history and as such you will agree with me that uh, when it comes to uh, political turmoils that uh, lead to mass destruction. No uh, particular continent is uh, is an exception. But then, uh, if, if you look at even those counties in the West, those, those with mature democracy, uh, like America, Africa, for example, has caused uh, serious uh, mass destruction in Iraq and other places. But you don't, uh, you don't see, uh, I see so much putting such pressure on them like they, they, they do uh, with, with African presidents, like like they did to uh, Bashir, they did to Mugabe, they, they are now in, uh, uh, with, with the Ugandan president, they did to Uru. Like there is talent of uh, double stunts uh, stop, and it can only stop when uh, we Africans uh, can count the United and chat uh, the direction as a country. We need, we need to uh, regenerate and uh, find uh, ourselves and live our glory. All right. Uh, thank you. But we seem to have been having uh, an audio problem there. If you can fix it, uh, Samson, I know we are coming close to the finish. Uh, but our professor now, our pro Ugandan president, has called the ICC a bunch of useless people. Uh, his Rwandese counterpart, uh, Paul Kagame, has said the court was never about justice, but politics uh, disguised as international justice. Uh, president Huru Kenyatta himself, uh, who has been a victim of this cause, uh, castigated the court as a tool of global power politics and not the justice it was built to dispense. Is there any truth uh, to these sentiments uh, there, Professor? Mm, 50-50. There's some truth in it. Which part? The, the one President Museveni said they're a bunch of useless people <laughs> or the one Paul Kagame said the court was never about justice but politics are disguised as international justice or the part that President Huru Kenyatta said uh, that uh, the ICC is a tool of global power politics and not the justice it was built to dispense. Which part is true? Yes. Uh, <laughs> let, me just, let me just sum, uh, sum it up that uh, I agree with those sentiments mm -hmm. because where we are not treated equally mm -hmm. and uh, as you can see uh, much of the people who have been charged in those courts are africans mm -hmm. nine out of ten cases that are before the court right now are africans yes mm. and you can agree we can go globally we will find that crimes against humanity have been committed and no action was uh, has been taken you know, as I do, the Americans, the British, when they were in Iraq, they violated fundamental human rights, even Afghanistan. And no, nobody has ever thought to even attempt to raise the issue. So out of that kind of frustration, and they're targeting Africans, I identify myself with those kind of statements. If we say that this is a court to address uh, human rights or crimes against humanity, we should see it across board, not on targeting about African. Their aim is only to humiliate African leaders. And I've said what where we agree or we disagree with them is in terms of, of immunity and procedural matters. They don't want to listen to us. 
And the sooner Africa can put their acts together, the better. Dr. Masanga has given you about the Kenyan case. Who are the highest responsibility to be charged? They ignore those people. So they are not interested with the justice. They are interested to show. Even the way Okamba was trying to, to talk about Kenya, he was saying that he would use Kenya as a case study. Where is justice? When you are talking about the case study. So Museveni, Kagame, President Uhuru Kenyatta, they are right. And the sooner African, I have got a lot of hope in Africa. I am a true pan African. Never should we ship ourselves willingly to Europe to be humiliated in that kind of court. You will tell me that there will be justice if the case of Syria is addressed. You will tell me that there is justice when the case of the Palestinian people have been addressed. What they are after is only regime change in Africa so that they can be able to get their resources. Because if they know the African leaders who can stand against them and tell them no, so long as they are not in power, the purpose are in power, that's what they want. So this is how they want to humiliate them before that court. So they get scared as they come to Africa to, to, colonize, us, to colonize us. To me, I just look at ICC as new, new colonialism. They want to colonize us. So I identify myself with those statements that it's not a court for uh, trying to address human uh, crimes against humanity, but merely to frustrate and humiliate African leaders. The sooner the African leaders promote democracy and human rights, they will save themselves from being humiliated in those courts. Mm -hmm. All right, and of course, some will argue that uh, uh, the undemocratic nature of the United Nations Security Council and the long-standing demands for its reform affect the standing of the ICC in a lot of African countries. Uh, Doctor, as we conclude, in 2016 there, we saw several African countries uh, indicating the intention to withdraw uh, from the International uh, Criminal Court, uh, that is the ICC. And this tide was reversed, however, when South Africa and the Gambia withdrew their notification to the United Nations, leaving Burundi as the only country that intended to seek a withdrawal. Is there a time we shall come where Africans will actually be serious about leaving ICC for real and not just uh, threats? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that time is now. Don't waste time. Don't play politics. Mm -hmm. Don't even wink. Don't look left. Just look forward. Remove this country from this court. This court is going to catch people later. This court on the continent, as long as it remains, as long as we don't strengthen the African Union Court of Justice and assure them that we have sentenced one African leader like the leader of Chad, Hussein Habre, who was sentenced. Hussein Habre, sentenced in Senegal. If we don't do those, these guys will come back. I'm telling you, they will come back as professors say, they are looking for regime change. They want a leader who will not stop them from touching the oil. You are producing oil in Kenya. If you have a leader who will say, our Kenyan oil, we don't want to trade with anybody. We don't want total oil here. We want to trade with Ajib. The French will go undermine, call the court. The court will come for you. Believe it or not, this court is going to come for you. And once this court comes back for you, it will take you. So the best way is leave now. Use Article 127, exit. In this darkness of COVID-19, there are so many things they are working behind the scenes. They know very well 
Look, the case of Malawi, Mojarika's case was was received within two days. Whereas some cases take even one, six months before they answer you. But Mojarika's case is already in court. That's another case coming up where the current government or those people who are in opposition are in geos claim Mudarika killed the people. So then what is it I can ask? What is our criminal justice system there? If we are going to seek up there, then there is no need of having chief justice in our countries. Why do we have courts? If we can go to, to another court outside, in order to harm people who have taken money, who have killed people on genocide, then Miriam, mm -hmm. what are we? Are we sovereign? Are we sovereign states? Mm, interesting question. That's my submission. All right, uh, Professor, as we end, uh, something that Dr. brought up, uh, Africans, they were the, the most excited uh, to be members of the ICC. That, that, is this an indictment of our own justice, uh, the lack of faith in our own justice institutions in the continent, as we, as we conclude? I, I think Professor has, has left us. What is the question? My question was a uh, very interesting point that the doctor has brought uh, because we see that uh, the components, uh, the constitution, the, uh, how uh, ICC is uh, constituted today, Africans who are the most excited uh, to be members of this court. Is this an indictment or the lack of faith in our own justice uh, systems in the different African countries? Do we not have that confidence in our own uh, you know, system for us to be so excited about an international uh, you know, court to try our cases here? What should we do in our in our institutions, in our justice as institutions, especially in the continent? Uh, I did say in my previous uh, uh, response that we should be able to promote rule of law and uh, rule of law mm -hmm. and good governance. We should promote democracy and human rights, mm -hmm. so that we don't create a loophole for us to be taken there. Let me just use the Kenyan case uh, of 2007 post-election violence. It is because the Kenyans knew that even if you go to this court, there's nothing you can get. So that's why the African get deceived, think that they, because our judicial services, we have talked about corruption. You have had cases you say, why should you hire a lawyer when you can pay a charge? So it means that the African readers, because of the political lack of political goodwill, our court will not work. Say how long it has taken for us to convict someone on an anti-corruption court, <laughs> lack of political goodwill. Mm. So so long as we create goodwill, confidence, and trust in our African courts, mm. the way that Dr. Masanga said, why should we have achieved justice? because we go to court to, to get justice. So when African perceive that when they go to our courts that we cannot get justice, yeah, that's when they hope that let them go, let them go to ICC, but ICC also has slaughterhouse. So it is high time that African uh, reform our judiciary, have a radical surgery. I want to thank uh, President uh, Mwai Kibaki he started the radical surgery, handed the new constitution, we had the fetching of churches. That is one way, about, uh, for about of a few rotten potatoes in our judicial service system, eh? Kenyans still feel that they can be able to get justice. See what uh, the chief magistrate did on the anti-corruption court? Mm -hmm. Kenyans have started getting, getting that confidence. So that one should be replicated around, around the continent of Africa so that uh, the African people can have confidence in their respective courts. Mm -hmm.
All right, thank you so much, one of our viewers here, Charles Maura. Thank you for writing. You're saying it's foolish uh, to call on foreigners to punish us. Who punishes them when their error themselves? Look at America violating black Americans' rights. Who is there uh, to punish uh, America? Uh, Sam, is it Samson? As we uh, conclude your last uh, comment, perhaps you could pick on that. Yes, uh, Miriam, uh, ICC by definition is International Criminal Court, and in a court, uh, justice is to be seen, uh, to be seen to be done. Uh, justice cannot be uh, seen to be done only when African countries are punished. So, like I want to share in the sentiments of uh, Dr. Masanga, that uh, we really need to put our act together and uh, char chart a different uh, uh, destiny uh, for uh, for Africa. So I want to end my, my, my I want to give my clo closing remarks with this this one. Somebody uh, really lamented by using the following words. They came for my friends, I kept quiet. They came for my uh, neighbor, I kept quiet. They came for my children, I kept quiet. Now they have come for, uh, they have come for me. Who, who will uh, fight for me? Let Africans feel challenged by that part of statement. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Uh, uh, doctor, any final my, words? Yes. My final words. Mm. Viewers, thank you very much. The crocodile eats you, eats your friend, you laugh. It goes for your neighbor, you laugh. You are already in the boat, the boat is sinking. It has take or just picked one of you. Instead of fighting to rescue him, even if it has taken the leg, you can amputate and put plaster, you laugh. When it finishes eating all of them, you will be the next person to be eaten. Therefore, my submission, four things, quickly. Point one, Africa is not united. We have a problem. We need to rediscover ourselves. Either the AU, the center cannot hold. We have been sold to France. And I have been crying about this for a long time. Nobody, no leader in Africa takes this on this. You can see, Amina Mohammed has been placed there now. I swear, you, you watch the drama. How many candidates has Africa included? Three. Are we united? No. Two, one, two, seven of the Roman statute is clear. Irreconcilable differences in the marriage can never be healed by staying in the same house. That's why the law separates property, divides the house, either lives for one partner, or you sell it and share the money. Why is Kenya and the other African countries still in the ICC doing what? It means you enjoy it. It will come back. Three work envelope. Those who want to support me, support me to go ahead in appeal. And let the Attorney General of this country tell me why he cannot surrender, why he doesn't want this thing, this smelly thing, this thing that will come back for you. Whether Raira is a pre the president, whether Ruto is the president, whether Mudavad is the president, whether Kalonzo is the president, or whether Peter Kenneth or Gideon Moy, whoever is the president of the Republic of Kenya in years to come, if you don't remove the work envelope, it will come back at the state house, at the president's office, knock on the door. These Bazungu are not very good people, and they are very good people. <laughs> they are both. They are good and bad. 
if they mean to fix you, they can fix you. Look at what they have done to Zimbabwe. They have finished it. They have literally finished Zimbabwe. They have told Zimbabwe not to even to sell one ounce, one carat of gold. Yet Zimbabwe in the stores in Harare it has gold. Jamen, how bad can it be for you to listen to me? Lastly, the candidates, apart from the Ugandan lady, the rest are Bonoko. Bonoko, is it correct you what? What it does, Bonoko Silanga, you are the Silanga man. You are uh, <laughs> I'm uh, being told married. it means it means Bonoko. fake. Yes. Yeah. I'm being told it means fake. Yeah, Bonoko. Or a gun without <laughs> bullet. The rest, apart from that Ugandan judge, the lady Okolanya. I swear Fargo is fake. The Canadian is fake. And the other man from Chicago is fake. Kenya should not accept. The, my Ugandan sister has been put in an equal contest where she will not even be number one or two. They will knock her in round one because bribery has taken place Corruption has taken place. George Soros, remember, he pays a lot of money to sustain ISIS. So with those remarks, I want to thank you all, the panel, Miriam. Thank you very much for what you have done today. I've talked. I don't think I'll have the energy to talk again. I wish you good luck in the next show in Nairobi. Thank you. And I want to take this opportunity to thank my professor. Thank you very much for attending these four hours. The same to my brother Onyango. Today you have stood the times, the test of time. Let's see each other again tomorrow when we see other topics. And back to the studio, I want to thank Miriam, my able co-host, very good host at times. There are subjects that we agree on, very 100%, like this one. <laughs> very several corruption, this one and the other, we agree. I want to thank Kenyans at large. And I want to thank all those people who helped me on this journey of ICC. There are people I cannot mention here, great friends who helped me, supported me. At, at times with a hundred dollars to go, 200 to put in the pocket. Whenever they heard I was going around standing for ICC. I want to thank you. Miriam, thank you for a great show. Thank you very much. Always tune in to Punchline Africa TV and the radio Punchline Africa. It is giving the real, our troops in, Mom, in Mogadishu, our troops in Kishimayo. That radio is for you. Yeah. Listen to the music. Request for music. There is someone there. You will send greetings to your people. God bless you all. God bless Africa. This station is for Africa, with Africa, by Africa, Charles Miriam.
peace must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us.